Hello and welcome to another video and today we're going to be doing an introduction to sculpting. So I'm going to press A to select all, X to delete and then I'm actually going to add back in a cube. I know I had a cube there already but I wanted to explain how to do it. Next up, for ease sake I'm going to scale this up a bit to about here and I'm going to add in a subdivision. Uh, I am in edit mode, so if you're in object mode, press tab to go into edit mode. Press W to bring up the subdivision mode, um, screen. You have it here. Subdivide. And then this little box on the bottom right. I'm going to drag this up. Uh, I'm going to go all the way to the top. Then I'm going to increase the smoothness, which as you'll notice will slowly turn this into a ball. Perfect. And this is going to be our sculpting target. Now, just to show you why we've done this, I'm just going to move that out of the way. I'm going to add in a UV sphere. Scale this up so we can have a look at both. So you'll notice two big differences here. So obviously both of these are a ball. Um, they're about the same size. Uh, I've not done it with numerically just by eye, so they pretend they're the same size. You'll notice some big differences. One being that this one is all quads. There is no non-quads here. It does have poles, being these ones. And a pole is any of these points that does not have four. So you'll notice that this has four lines coming out of it. And this one here has only got three. One, two, three. So that is a pole. This, however, has this mess up here. There is nothing you can do with that that will ever make it not look bad. So we're going to delete that one. Oh, I'm going to delete this one. And then I'm going to select this one. I'm going to press Alt-G to move it back to the center. Now, we're going to go on the top bar up here. And we're going to go to Sculpting. If you don't have it, you can press the plus button, General, and then go down to Sculpting there. But I do. Brilliant. So for the basis of Sculpting, we start off with this shape here. Uh, I'm going to go to the modifiers, add modifier, multi-resolution. I'm going to hit this twice. Now we have a very nice ball here. I'm actually going to hit it one more time. Now it's a very smooth ball. I've actually gone to 46,000 faces. Now, while in this sculpt mode, you'll notice it says up here sculpt mode, you have a number of brushes down the left-hand side. These all do slightly different things, and we're just going to go over them a little. Um, you have some extra controls up here. You have dynamic topology, which we won't go into today. We'll have a whole thing on just that. But we have the mirrors here. So let's turn on the X symmetry. And you'll see that it gives you not only your cursor when you highlight over it, but it's also got a dot on the other side that will cross over as you go over. So with the first brush selected, I'm just going to make a quick circle. It's not a very good circle, but it is a circle nonetheless. And you can see how easy it is to do. You'll notice that as I turn the screen that the motto resolution temporarily switches itself off. Really convenient, just keeps the viewport moving quick. Next up, we've got the draw sharp, which similarly to that one, except it's a lot sharper. And you'll notice that by default it's going inwards. But let's say I want it to go outwards. If I hold down control and do the exact same line. There we go. Next up, we have the clay strips brush. Now, this is probably one of my favorite brushes. So I'm going to press F, which allows me to scale up or down the brush. I can go smaller all the way down here, which will make lines uh, so small that you can't actually see them. Uh, I can bring it up a lot and I can clay strips. I like this brush a lot. Um, it's not the best brush, but I like it a lot personally. So I can create little bumps out with this. And let's say I want to smooth this out a bit, if I hold the shift button down, and again go over it, and get nice smooth edges. Brilliant. Next up, we have the, sorry, that was just clay. This is clay strips. Um, this one, similar to the clay brush, I said this one's a lot rougher. So if I start doing this one, you'll see that. So this is a lot rougher, and it's squared. I'm not making anything in particular here. We're just going over brushes. Uh, and as I go out, you'll notice the multi-resolution will uh, start to fail me. Perfect. 
Then we have the clay thumb. Now, this is a brush that you will get very little use of. You will use very few of these brushes. Um, but as you can see, it sort of pushes things out of the way. So you're sort of pushing the topology in one direction. Brilliant. Next up, we have the layer brush. Now I have never legitimately had a use for this brush. Um, I'm sure it is very useful. Um, someone will probably jump into my comments and tell me about how useful this brush is. I've never used it, never found a use for it, still don't have a use for it. Probably will never use it ever. The inflate brush. Now this one is a genuinely useful brush, um, especially for just adding volume to things. So as I go over places here, you'll notice it's sort of bumping it all up. That makes it a very, very useful brush. You will use this brush a lot. Um, I know I do. I use it a hell of a lot. One of my top brushes, uh, along with like the clay brush and such. Uh, you've got the blob brush, which is very similar to the clay brush, but it's, as you can see, a lot quicker. I'm actually going to undo that because I don't like that at all. Cool. Then you've got the crease brush. Now, I use a crease brush a lot as well, um, and it does pretty much exactly what you expect. It adds in creases. Um, you can use this for a number of different things. Um, you can use it to just add increases, but also if you hold in the uh, control key, you can use it as a pinch brush as well. So it works very well. Very easy to use. Next up you have the smooth brush, which is completely useless because you can use any brush while holding smooth down. Um, and smooth is held down with the shift key. So I could do it like this, and then I could smooth that out by holding shift. So, um, smooth brush, useless, really, you won't use it. Smooth brush, flatten brush. Flatten brush is actually very useful, um, though I don't use it very often. Um, it does exactly what you'd expect, and it flattens out areas. Um, very rarely do I use it. Now, fill brush, again, never used it. Never found a use for it. Um, I, I, I can see what it does. If you see here, you see where I have a crease here. If I start going over that, it's literally filling in creases. It's just, I don't see why you'd really use it. Scrape brush, again, similar. You can kind of see what it does. It's just sort of scraping off the top rather than uh, doing a full cutout. But that works very similar to flatten, just in a different manner. Multi-plane scrape, which again, I don't see the use for that either. I wouldn't bother with it. Most of the brushes you're going to use are going to be draw brush, clay brush, clay strips brush, and a crease brush, brush, and then a couple more further down. So we will actually pinch, useless, because you can just use crease, so pinch does push together as well. Um, so pinch does still have a use, even if it's not one that you're going to use often. Grab brush, you will use this one a lot. This one is your grab pull. You can push and pull things, pack stuff in together, um, this is uh, probably one of the top brushes that you will likely use. It's also a brush that you will probably use outside of just doing normal sculpting. Uh, it's sometimes very useful for grabbing normal topology to move that around as well. Uh, elastic to form. As you see, it sort of pulls things around, but it pulls a lot of stuff with it. Um, this is good for sort of just changing the general shape, but without trying to ruin too many of the shapes that you've actually got in place. Snake hook. You will never use this brush unless you have dynamic topology on. It does this, but without dynamic topology, you're going to get some odd results like that. So it is a very good brush with dynamic topology. Not such a good brush without it. Um, there is some stuff you can do, but... Unless you have dynamic topology on, I wouldn't really recommend it, unless you're going very small, like I have here. Uh, thumb brush, which is essentially very similar to the brush that we went over earlier. Uh, I can't remember which one it was. Scrape, very similar to scrape. You push stuff around. Uh, pose brush. Pose brush is very useful, um, especially for, uh, as you've probably guessed, posing. You can move things around with it. Um, and it'll try to go to the center of the mesh you're on. So if I grab here, it'll try to push from the center of the mesh. And the size of your brush makes a huge difference here. Um, depending on the size that you're using will depend heavily on how it decides to uh, 
work, you'll, yeah, that's scary. Nudge brush, again, very similar to the um, um, thumb brush. However, this is a lot more topolo uh, topology dependent. So the thumb, the thumb brush um, isn't as good for cleaning, whereas a thumb brush can be used for cleaning a mesh up, as you see I'm sort of doing here. You can see the little squares, and I can sort of ensure that I'm sort of pushing them around nice and neatly. Uh, rotate brush, don't ever use this. However, it does have some good uses. I just never get it to work in a way that I actually want it to work. Um, but it works. Slide relax. Again, this is a brush that is actually should be way more useful than it is. And I'm really hoping that at some point Blender incorporate a better slide relax. Because at the moment this is just it's such a bad brush um, that should be really useful. Um, the thing is a lot of different 3D programs that have sculpting have this kind of brush that just work better. Um, not a good one. Uh, I don't even know what this brush does. Doesn't seem to do anything. Um, cloth. Cloth is useful. It's not going to do well on this mesh. It's just going to freeze my computer. But the cloth brush is a very good brush if you can uh, find a mesh that it works well on, um, which is usually a plain or a non-enclosed mesh. Um, so I won't show it on this one. Uh, simplify as you'd expect, it won't work with my multi-resolution. Uh, masking is very useful, so I can paint out this bit here in black. I should put the strength up to make this easier. And then, if I were to say go over here and decide that I want to do a big thing and go down, the mask area is unaffected. So I have to remove that mask now. Um, perfect. And I think that's pretty much all you really need to know for um, an intro to sculpting. I will deep dive into some of these uh, a bit more later on. But uh, for now, that's all you really need. So, thank you for watching. And I made a little dragon thing. It's like a little cartoony dragon head thing. So, thank you for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful evening. And I hope that we can go on further than this at a later date. Um, in order to make our very own characters with 3D sculpting. So, I hope you have a wonderful evening, and thank you for watching. Goodbye!